Ladies and gentlemen, coming to you live from the Lucky Dog Studio in a hidden location somewhere in the upper Midwest of the United States of America. It's a brother. We're disgusting with the intro. Ladies oh, and gentlemen, coming to you live from the Lucky Dog All right, Studio stop the music. in a hidden. Forget the intro. Let's just do the damn show. So whatever that was, I don't know, but I'm just going to get through it. Okay. I'm already late and this put me back in however many minutes an hour. And so we're just going to do the show. How about that? And we're going to skip the trending topics because I don't care today because I'm mad, <laughs> but I'm not mad at you because thank you for sticking with me. This has been a nightmare this morning. But the whole morning's been a friggin' nightmare. So I'm going to drink my coffee, soothe my soul, and let's get into the show. How about, how about that? How about that? I'm going to do it live. How about that? I'm mixing my memes here. But anyway, let's just, let's just go. I just, it's one of those days. It's just one of those days. What's that the song by Limp Biscuit? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Night Live. I'm your host, Marty, also known as Pete Dog Knight on the internet. And welcome back to the Pete Dog Knight channel, where sometimes technical difficulties get the best of you. Um, um, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad I'm finally here. And let's just uh, stick with it. Now, um, looks like we're already, I didn't even put the donation goal up yet because it's, uh, oh, four, what's the date today? Oh, seven. We're already two thirds away to our daily donation goal. That's awesome. So, um, all you gotta hit that $20 mark. Anyway, hey, uh, I do a show where we talk about news and shit that's happening in the world and that's what I'm gonna do today. So. Let's say hi to everybody and get it started, because we're really late. Um, first in chat over Rubble, Mr. Avocados Diablo, who gets the bell. Now he, now he was already there on the first try, and he got there first on the second try. Also, good morning, Gunfox61, the awesome and ever-present administrator of the P-Dog Night Discord server. And good morning, Road Dog, s and &M. I know what you do. <laughs> yeah, that's not it. Anyway, welcome to the show. I'm glad you made it. And uh, I don't know, if, is anyone else watching Rumble? I doubt it because, well, oh my gosh, eyes are starting to pop up on Rumble even. So so people are figuring out that we had to restart the show. Um, on YouTube, first in the chat is also Avocado Dobby. Avocado gets the bell. That would be Avocado Diablo. Also, good morning, Kara Soldier, Gunfox61, GDSOB, Zed the Snarky, um, Simon Wolfwood, Unacceptable Views, JB's in the house, Anonymity, T2, I'll be back, TC's in the house, uh, who else? Scroll down here. I know Simon Noble Nation's here somewhere. Those Ain't Real Dude is here. Uh, good morning also to Lord Stanhope, and mm -hmm, I'm looking. Uh, that that looks like everybody. The only reason I know Stanhope Somnable Nation is here because Somnable Nation did um, tweet out the show. Sure, you gospels in the house. Welcome, everybody. I'm glad you're rolling in after the first debacle that was um, this show that blew up for some reason. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy Das Hotep is in the house, too. Over on Rumble. Don't Good morning, go, sir. Go, go. Also, by the way, Gunfox has been busy this morning dropping Hamiltons everywhere. Wait a minute. Oh, wait. There's holy sh. Oh, one is oh, because one was from last night. Well, it, uh, Gunfox, you are, you are the, the new Streamlabs Superstar, Superstar sponsor, sponsor of the day. day. Thank you, sir. And uh, let's, well, I, boy, I might have to just do Gunfox articles all morning. So I don't even know what's trending on X this morning because um, I've had I've had a hell of a morning. Um, I do know that um, the WNBA draft was yesterday. <laughs> And once uh, Caitlin Clark was drafted, I think everybody else, I think everybody turned the rest of it off because no one knows another player in the, the in college women's basketball, even though um, now I'm not. And by the way, I'm not I'm not knocking women's basketball. I enjoy watching women's basketball because I'm a basketball coach. And so I'm a, I, I, can, I can watch 
a fifth grade in-house um, rec league basketball game and enjoy it. But not everybody can. And I understand that. And I understand that your entertainment dollars, your entertainment time is precious to you. And also it is limited. So the reason that um, now Caitlin Clark was a phenomenon in college basketball and she made um, I put Iowa back on the map because they were a really good basketball team in college basketball when I was in, in college, the Iowa women's team with Vivian Stringer, whatever. Um, but she's a phenomenon and she's, you know, made that game exciting for at least a, a short while. And um, she filled up uh, arenas all across the Big Ten and also, um, you know, brought in a lot of eyes to co women's college basketball. Now, I'm going to give an opinion that's probably not very popular here. Um, well, maybe popular here, but it may not be popular in general. It, um, I don't believe that her phenom status is going to translate to the WNBA. Okay? Um, there's a reason college basketball um, is exciting. Because college basketball has built-in fans. Um and built in and loyal fans. And when a college basketball team is doing good, whether it's a men's team or a women's team, um, they're going to draw attention. When you have a phenom like Caitlin Clark playing at the university of Iowa, um, the buzz comes because she's filling up arenas in stadiums. Now they had a, what, um, they had, uh, what is it? Um, like they had a game this year. They played in the football stadium that 90,000 people showed up to. Because she is the phenomenon. And look, um, I, but I don't think it's going to translate to the WNBA. Why? Because the WNBA, while they are great players in the women's game, it's not the same as a college team. It's not the same as men's basketball. It's not the same as other sports that are popular and for whatever reason um that league has never still in over 25 years turned a profit and so i noticed someone this morning complaining that well her rookie contract's what 338,000 over four years um saying it's that, well that's like a teacher salary yeah in my school district that's a teacher salary um but it's because the league's never made a profit it's been subsidized by the nba mm -hmm. since day one and that's the rookie contract salaries that women get in the WNBA. It's not, they don't draw enough fans to, um, you know, to be able to do much more than that. Now, I would love to see her make the Indiana Fever, which is the team she's playing for. Did you even know there was a team called the Indiana Fever? <laughs> I I mean, I tangentially knew only because um, I went to some uh, Minnesota Lynx games and they played them once back when the Lynx won four WNBA titles in a row. Um, but most people don't even know the names of the WNBA teams. And when it comes to, look, if you if you really want to see exciting basketball, you're going to go to the NBA first, then you're going to go to a college men's basketball, then you're going to college women's basketball, maybe. Or you might just go to some high-level high school games. And I'll tell you what, the problem with the WNBA is um, they play basketball at a level – of about, I'm going to get killed for this. They played at a level for, of about 15, 16 year old boys minus the athleticism. Okay. I, you could take probably any high ranking, uh, 15 or 16 year old AAU team and put them against the best WNBA team. And you would have a game <laughs> in which the boys would probably beat the women just because of the athleticism, just about just for, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, and it's not knocking the WNBA it's for women's basketball. It's the top of the possible game that you can play. You know, it's the best you can get, but it's just not going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. Maybe now Caitlin Clark is fun to watch because she bombs threes, just like Steph Curry. Um, maybe possibly, the rivalry between Angel Reese and Caitlyn Jenner, or Caitlyn Jenner, Caitlyn Clark, not Caitlyn Jenner. Caitlyn Jenner is adamant about not having trans people play um, women's sports. But anyway, um, maybe 
it'll translate into the renaissance of the game, similar to, say, when Magic Johnson and Larry Bird came in the league. But I doubt it. There's going to be eyes on the Indiana Fever for about a half a season, and then people are going to realize they're watching a WNBA game. And only the diehards will continue to watch WNBA games. That's my opinion. They've, In fact, the Indiana Fever, all 41 of their games this season are going to be televised. It would be interesting to see what those ratings are like. They may be high for a few games, but you're still watching the WNBA. And there are – now, the, the other thing, too, is the WNBA competes with summer sports season like baseball and even some soccer leagues and even some uh, – I don't know. There's, there's got to be something better to watch than WNBA. I uh, just say it. I hate to say it, and I love, you know, I love basketball. So I'll probably watch some of those games. But that's because I'm a basketball head. I, I'm, I'm curious. Plus, you know, Kayla Clark's been fun to watch for the last two years. I'm curious how she'll do in the WNBA. There might even be some nice rivalries there with her and Diana Taurasi, who she did mention on Saturday Night Live. By the way, she was on Saturday Night Live this weekend. So anyway, um, I got to get back. I got to get to the show because I got a lot to do here. Um, so anyway, uh, we're, yeah, two thirds of the goal. That's good. Um, thank you, Gun Fox, for your uh, contributions. I'm going to just click on these right now. And we may never get to my topic today, but thank you, Gun Fox, for um, dropping multiple Hamiltons in the tip jar, along with articles. If you want to hijack the show like Gun Fox, there's a link in the chat that tells you how to do that. Um because he's, he's, oh my gosh, how many of these you have? Good Lord, man, what did you do? Is this, how many articles you got up here? Wait a minute, let me see something. I got, let, me, let me see something here. This is, I got, oh, you got two from last night. One, two, three, four. Good Lord, is, did I make a mistake here? What, what the hell's going on here? That's wild. Okay. Well, we're going to start with Gun Fox's article. I'm, like I said, I'm, let me see if there's anything trading. I'm not going to talk about it, but let's see. I'm going to look at the Explore tab very briefly. I'm not even going to put it on the screen. Let's look at the Explore, Explore tab, tab trending. WNBA's trending number one. Whoa. Wait a minute. Only because of Caitlin Clark. I guarantee it. Um. <laughs> okay i wasn't gonna do it but i'm going to oh look that time of year when people who have never watched the wnba start to complain about wnba salaries again cj pearson's right on the mark yes um today's show they had angel reese on this has always been a dream for me angel reese WNBA Chicago Sky draft pick talks about last night's draft and how she's preparing for her next chapter. Um, someone here, Caitlin Clark fans are everywhere. These little ladies heard Clark was helping light the Empire State Building, found out where the massive building she'd be, a uh, glass door to see inside. They were banging the door, holding up their jerseys, hoping she'd notice. Okay, so I look, I'm, I say more power to them, to the WNBA and Caitlin Clark for bringing some attention to the game. And if it makes the game more popular hey more power to them i just say it so anyway if caitlin clark got paid a lot it would be problematic because there would be black wnba players making less oh if she didn't if she doesn't get paid a lot it's problematic because male nba players make more there's no escape from grievance in the woke era oh my gosh all right i will put the uh i'll put the wa wnba trending topic on that's the only one that's going to be on the links today um, but it's so true. It's like, it doesn't matter what they pay her. There's going to be a problem if she, they pay her more because she's bringing in, uh, you know, attention to the Indiana fever and they sell out all their games because of Caitlin Clark. They're still going to complain because she's making more than the black players. If there's, if, 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 she, if they pay her less, well, they're already paying her less than the male players because the NBA makes about, uh, makes a profit. <laughs> the, the NBA makes a profit. It was just crazy. They're going to make sure whatever attention Clark could bring to the fledgling little watch WNBA gets crushed by far left grievance politics. Exactly. Here's Nina Turner. When does South Carolina get a Saturday Night Live spot? 
They don't because she's not the two-time player. There's no one on the team's the two-time player of the year. It just doesn't matter. Someone here, Victoria Broadworth. This is one of these lefties. I wasn't going to write a column about the WNBA draft, but then I saw what these incredible women are being paid, $36 an hour. No joke. Caitlin Clark, number one all-time leading scorer. Camila Cardozo, number three most outstanding player. My fave, Angel Reese, number seven. The men start in the millions. In a league that doesn't make money. In a league that doesn't make money money in fact i'm gonna i'm gonna answer this quote tweet in a league that doesn't make money it is subsidized by the nba Sorry, I knew it. I knew if this is going to come up today. I wasn't planning on this. I would have done it and I and I known. So anyway, good morning. Yep, it's a double good morning day when you have number, not one player get drafted to the WNBA, but two. Let's go. Uh, congrats, Caitlin and Kate. I guess they're sisters who got her. What? Wait a minute. What? Who's this Kate? I don't know who Kate is. So happy for you, blah, 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 blah. Oh, because of the Iowans. I covered the 2024 WNBA draft yesterday. Such a, such a historic draft and a great lead up to what will be a great season. Well, good luck to the WNBA. And you know what? Go for it, ladies. Go for it. I hope you, I hope you generate more money. The WNBA. Oh, here's and here's why. So here it is. Someone put this here. Decided to Google WNBA salaries before the draft, and I actually want to die. What the hell? Top four picks of the draft will make each make a one year a year one base salary of seventy six thousand five hundred thirty five dollars, which will grow slightly. Blah 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 blah. Well, here's the reason. The WNBA generates about sixty million dollars a year in revenue which is less than their expenditures. The WNBA generates about $7 billion, with a B, dollars in revenue. Name one player, name one team. I know one player, Sydney. Um, uh, oh, shoot. <laughs> I can't remember her last name. <laughs> And the only reason I um because the only reason I know is because her brother played with my son in AU ball. Um and I'm blanking on her name. I cannot believe it. Okay, well, I, there you go. See, I can't even do it, and I know the family. <laughs> uh, anyway, um Good Lord. People complaining what they're making. Um, when the league makes a profit, the women will profit also. The league, the WNBA needs a better TV deal. And I think when it's time to renegotiate the deal, they're going to get a much better one. That's the key to salaries improving. In the meantime, support the league and watch the games. The product is great. Yeah, everyone complaining about how much they say make. I bet has never been to a game. All right, enough about this because I got to get to what's going on in the articles today and gun fox is going to try to kill me well let's see what happens here all right let's oh what did you wait did you is that wait is that this one is that oh no 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 oh that is the first one okay i know this was trending so i'm gonna go do gun fox's articles first and then we'll try to get to what i was supposed to talk about today who knows what's gonna happen it's just one of those shows let's start with this one though um thank you gun fox 61 um so the guys of war protesters have apparently shut down the golden gauge bridge yesterday was it yesterday? Cars were stopped and chains were used to block traffic lanes on the famous bridge. Protesters also blocked traffic in Chicago, New York City, and Seattle. What are you going to accomplish with this? <laughs> what are you going to accomplish with this protesting 
blocking traffic in the United States. Demonstrators protesting the war in Gaza shut down San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge for around five hours Monday as protests were held in other cities in the U.S. Demonstrators on the famous bridge held a sign that read, Stop the World for Gaza in capital letters. They used vehicles and chained themselves together to block travel lanes on the bridge, the California Highway Patrol said, adding that around 20 people were arrested. Only 20? How many were there? Oh, there weren't that many. I guess that's why. Anyway, uh, NBC Bay Area reported that the bridge was closed for around five hours and the traffic there was blocked beginning at around 7.30 a.m. The bridge reopened around 12.15 p.m., the highway patrol said. It's not the first time pro-Palestinian protesters have blocked traffic on the Golden Gate Bridge to draw attention to the war and their cause. The group tra blocked traffic on the bridge in February, calling for a ceasefire and demanding the U.S. stop supplying weapons to Israel. Uh, on Interstate 880 in Oakland, protesters chained themselves to a 55-gallon drums filled with cement, according to the Highway Patrol. They are actively working to remove these individuals, and lanes will be reopened. The Highway Patrol said in a statement, these individuals will be arrested, and they will be promptly released. <laughs> it's my own embellishment. In Chicago, around 40 people were arrested at O'Hare International Airport after a group of protesters obstructed traffic. Police said, I would be running over people. I'm telling you. Stop sending. Okay, no, I wouldn't. That's just me being facetious. In Minecraft and GT, what is it? GTA? Yeah, GTA 7. Is, is that out yet? <laughs> Grand Theft Auto 7? I don't know. Uh, the group of Chicago citizens said the protest date was picked to coincide with the April 15th tax filing deadline. Oh, I would be pissed if I was going to mail my taxes and I got stuck behind some fucking jackass protesters by the way good morning aaron meredith darren root gdsob um whoever else showed up max creation broadcast what's up good morning uh okay you're all here anyway for folks the lord of news slapped a load of news on p dog's desk so hard might yeah you uh, yeah you may have broken my desk i'm telling you gun fox but you did good this is a good one because i i wanted to talk about this anyway because these ass hats were probably released within five minutes of being taken in. All right, so that's the first one Gunfox gave me. Thank you, sir. Let's do another one. Because Gunfox, wait, did you give me six? One, two, three, four, five. Brother. <laughs> I'm not getting to my topic today. Make sure you check out the links I put in the chat. The first links are the of the are of things that. Uh, that I was supposed to talk about, I may never get to them. I'm just saying, it's just one of those days. Might have to do them tomorrow. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Let's see what this fresh hell is. Oh, I wanted to talk about this too. Thank you for providing this, Gun Fox. This is a good one too. Well, good one is relative, but apparently there has been a semi-automatic firearm ban that passed the Colorado, Colorado, Colorado House and is heading to the Colorado Senate. Now, this is this is crazy. Because I don't think they know what the fuck... Uh, clearly, the people who pass this shit don't know what they're doing. Um, in Denver, Colorado's Democratic-controlled House on Sunday passed a bill that would ban the sale and transfer of semi-automatic firearms. A major step for the legislation after roughly the same bill was swiftly killed by Democrats last year. Wow. Killed by Democrats? Do you, do you realize, wait a minute, I, this is interesting. Does this include pistols? Like, because most, most, most weapons are semi-automatic. Like, not most, but most of the ones that people buy. I mean, there's, I have a, I have a trap door single shot 4570 1873 Springfield. That's not semi-automatic. You got to load for every single shot. But most even a revolver could be considered semi-automatic, couldn't it? I, come on. Okay, listen. Listen. The bill which passed on a 35 to 27 vote is now on its way to the Democratic-led Senate. If it passes there, it could bring Colorado in line with 10 other states, including California, New York, and Illinois, that have prohibited semi-automatic guns. Uh, but even in a state plagued by some of the nation's worst mass shootings such legislation faces headwinds um the colorado political history is purple shifting blue only recently the bill's chance of success in the state and senate 
are lower than they were in the House, where Democrats have a 45-19 majority and a bigger far-left flank. Governor Jared Polis, also a Democrat, has indicated his wariness over such a ban. Last year, a similar bill died in committee with some Democratic lawmakers citing concerns over a sweep of, of a ban and promises they made to their constituents to avoid government overreach affecting most gun owners' rights. Uh, yeah, Colorado's, uh, there's a lot of hunters in Colorado. There's a lot of people who like guns in Colorado, just like every other state. I'm sorry. Is this all semi-automatic weapons? I'm curious. Or they mean semi-automatic rifles? What do they mean? And wait a minute. Ban the sale and transfer of semi-automatic firearms. Interesting. So what if they went, could they buy them in Nebraska or Wyoming or something like that and bring them home? I don't know. What happened to the words shall not be infringed? Anyway, so... Um, let's see. Democrats last year passed and Poland signed a law of four less expansive gun control bills. Those included raising the age for buying any gun from 18 to 21, establishing a th now it doesn't say possessing though, establishing a three day waiting period between the purchase and receipt of a gun, strengthening the state's red flag law and rolling back some legal protections for the firearm industry, exposing it to lawsuits from victims of gun violence. Um, <laughs> which is which is crazy because unless it's uh, not used as intended look the only people I'm not a gun guy but I do know that all you're doing is restricting the gun ownership of people who legally buy guns you're not you're not stopping anyone who does this shit illegally the only people who gun laws affect are people who follow the law Good God. Those laws. Um, oh, wait. What is this? Those laws were signed months after five people were killed in an LGBT. <gasps> now, it's interesting. They put this in the article. Those laws were signed months after five people were killed at an LGBTQ plus nightclub in Colorado Springs last year by... A young person, male human being, that claims to be non-binary. So, by somebody from that community. Soon the state will mark the 25th anniversary of the 1999 Columbine High School shooting that killed 13 people. Okay. That was 25 years ago. Um, oh, this is insane. Um, other mass shootings in Colorado included 12 people killed in 2012 in an Aurora movie theater and 10 people killed in 2021 in a Boulder supermarket. Aloha Akbar. Um, this state where, if in, this is a state where the modern era mass shooting began with Columbine, Democratic Representative Javier Mabry said urging fellow lawmakers to join other states to ban semi-automatic weapons. Is this all semi-automatic weapons? Wow. If I were a gun maker, I would just rebrand. These are not semi-auto. They are partially auto. <laughs> Hello, select the boy. Yeah, boy. Holy shit. Um, so at least they're not saying that you can't have your weapons you already own. And it's in the state. So can I buy a gun outside the state and bring it home? Republicans described the legislation as an onerous encroachment on the U.S. Constitution's Second Amendment. They argued that mental illness and people who do not value life, not guns, are the issues that should be addressed. People with ill intent can use other weapons, such as knives, and harm others, they argued. Democratic responded that semi-automatics can cause much more damage in a shorter period of time. Then why isn't the, lead, isn't the leading cause of death of homicides? Why... Why are uh, semi-automatic semi rifles not the leading cause of death or homicides? Um, they're not. <laughs> uh, in Aurora, when the shooter walked into the theater and opened fire, maybe said in less than 90 seconds, shot a room full of people. They cannot, that cannot be done with a knife. That cannot be done with a knife. Okay. So there you go. Um, it, it, is it just me or is that just blatantly unconstitutional? I'm sorry. I, you know, I, obviously you feel for people who've been injured or harmed in any of those incidents. Um, but the reality is those incidents 
are extremely rare and it doesn't stop people who are using guns legally because people who are using gun legally aren't going out and doing that. People who acquire arm, firearms legally aren't going out and doing that. That's fascinating. Um, so anyway, um, next, what? <laughs> oh my God. Good Fox. Where did you find this crap? Um, owners. Here's the new next one. Owners of a Colorado funeral home. Is, are, is this going to be a new law, a new section called Colorado man next to Florida man owners of a Colorado funeral home where 190 decaying bodies were found charged with COVID fraud. Wow. Um, let's fix this. A couple who owned a Colorado funeral home where authorities last year discovered 990 decaying bodies were indicated on federal charges that they misspent nearly $900,000 in pandemic relief funds on vacations, cosmetic surgery, jewelry, and other personal expenses, according to court documents unsealed on Monday. The indictment reaffirms accusations from state prosecutors that John and Carrie Halford gave or gave families dry concrete instead of cremated ashes and alleges the couple buried the wrong body on two occasions. Okay. I don't know how the COVID fraud is related to this, but that's the head. It does make for a sensational headline from the AP. The, I think the bigger problem here is, yeah. Can you smell that smell? Ew. 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 Um, I mean, they, instead of cremating bodies, they gave families dry concrete. The couple also collected more than $130,000 from families for cremations and burial service. They never provided the indictment said, well, yeah, they're fighting 190 decaying bodies. Holy shit. Uh, the 15 charges brought by federal grand jury are in addition to the more than 200 criminal counts already pending against the Halfords in Colorado state court. For corpse abuse, money laundering, theft, and forgery, the federal offenses carry a potential penalties of 20 years in prison and $250,000 in fines, the indictment said. On Monday, the owners of the Return to Nature Funeral Home in Colorado Spring, that's a gross name. I guess ashes to ashes, dust to dust, right? Hello, Gen T. Um, the Monday, the owners of the Return to Nature federal Funeral Home in Colorado Springs entered a federal courtroom bound in shackles as they made their initial appearance before U.S. Magistrate Judge Scott Varholik. Assistant U.S. Attorneys Tim Neff argued the couple were a flight risk after they allegedly fled to Oklahoma last October when the decaying bodies were first discovered and before their arrest on state charges on November 8th. They simply evaporated from the community. Poof. The judge did not immediately decide the couple should be released pending trial. He set an arraignment hearing for Thursday. Callie ha Carrie Halford's attorney, Chaz Mihilarik, or Mihilarik, Mihilarik, <laughs> yes, that's how you say it, Mihilarik, <laughs> said he would argue against detention at the next hearing. John Halford's public defender, Kylie Leighton Dresa, um, told the judge that he had been following his bond conditions in the state case and that detention was unnecessary. The new charges and accusation triggered more anguish for families who sent their loved ones to the funeral home. Early new revel or every new revelation about the case is a jolt to Tanya Wilson, who hired Return to Nature to cremate her mother's remains. Wilson spread the ashes with family in Hawaii. After the grim discovery, Wilson was told those ashes weren't actually her mother, whose body has since been identified among the 190 decaying bodies. Oh, my God. <laughs> God, this is terrible. Hundreds of family members like Wilson had thought they put their loved ones to rest or clutch their ashes close only to have them have the healing torn away. Whew. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, okay, let's go to the indictment here. 
Before the new indictment was unsealed, public records showed the Halfords had been plagued by debt, facing evictions and lawsuits for unpaid cremations, even as they spent lavishly on themselves. The indictment charges or alleges the couple used $882,300 in pandemic relief funds to buy items that also included a vehicle, dinners, tuition for their child, and cryptocurrency. The fraud involved three loans obtained between March 2020 and October 2021, authorities said. Previously released court documents from the state abuse of a corpse case reveal more details about what they were spending their money on. They bought a GMC Yukon and an Affinity that together were worth over $120 thousand dollars is that all i mean a really nice yukon would be 70 80 on its own i suppose maybe an, i don't know enough to cover creation costs twice over for all of the bodies found in their business facility last october they were in the facility <laughs> oh wait so the real story here is gas for cremation has gotten so expensive that a funeral home did some really messed up crap <laughs> yes that's binomics for you Okay, um, let's see. That is just thoroughly disgusting, for a lack of better term. Yeah, it's fucked up, is what it is. That is the I, there is a better term. It's like it thoroughly disgusting. No, the better term is that's fucked up, baby. <laughs> anyway, just reading all about the money they had. Yeah, they had plenty of money. They had more than the, the just the cost of the vehicles would have more than covered all the creations. <laughs> Way more. Well. Maybe the cost of gas has gone up a little bit. Anyway, the Halfords also play, paid for trips to California, Florida, Las Vegas, as well as 31000 in cryptocurrency, laser body sculpting, shopping at luxury retailers like Gucci and Tiffany and Company. Uh, the couple have not yet entered pleas to the state's abuse of corpse charges. So there you go. Um, wow. Uh, there's more, but we got to move on. Well, um, <clears throat> Let me just say something here. Let me let me let me tell you something. Well done, Gut Fox. Well done. That that that's Ooh boy. Sorry, excuse me. I didn't mean to burp. All right, next. <laughs> what do we got now? Oh, okay. This is a little update on the Baltimore Bridge crash. Four more bodies, a fourth body found weeks after the Baltimore Bridge crash. The fourth victim in the last month's Baltimore Bridge collapse has been recovered after salvage crews located the body trapped in one of the missing construction vehicles underwater. Six people died when the Francis Scott Key Bridge fell on uh, 26th of March after it was struck by a large container ship. Now, this is the other part of the news that's interesting. The FBI has opened a criminal investigation into the incident, according to uh, sources the BBC uh, found or got. It will examine the circumstances leading up to the incidents. Federal agents have been present at the site since that time. Eight construction workers were on the bridge when it was struck by the Dolly container vessel, plunging them into the waters below. Two were rescued on the day, while bodies of two more were recovered two days later. A third body, that of Maynard Yasir Soazo Sandoval, uh, was found earlier this month. The fourth victim was positioned at positively identified on Monday by the chief medical examiner's office the day after the remains were recovered. The family does not want the name to be released, said the, said the officials leading the salvage work. Um, and then there's a quote here, as we mourn the lives lost and continue the recovery operation, we recognize each missing individual is someone's beloved friend or family member, said Colonel Ro Roland Butler Jr., superintendent of the Maryland Department of State Police, on Monday evening. Also on Monday, a spokesperson for the Department of Justice confirmed the FBI is present aboard the cargo ship Dolly, conducting court-authorized law enforcement activity. No further information will be shared publicly on the investigation at this time, said a spokesperson. So, um... Wait, what? How? Do... Okay, let's just let's just take the part of this article that is seems to be out of place. And I'm just saying. But he said, the public should know whether it's gun violence, civil rights abuse, financial fraud, or any other threat to public safety or pros property. We will seek accountability for anyone who may seem responsible. What was the purpose of that statement? The the. All of it except for the last sentence. We will seek accountability for anyone who may be responsible. <laughs> Why did he throw in gun violence, civil rights abuse, financial fraud, or any other threat to public well, uh, any threat to public safety or property? We will seek accountability for anyone who may be responsible. What the, why was what the hell was that there? Why did he say that? 
Um, the salvage mission includes several agencies. The FBI investigation is separate from ongoing probe by the National Transportation Safety Board. Meanwhile, Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott announced that his city was wait Brandon Scott okay um, announced his city was taking legal steps to address the collapse. What I, what legal s steps? Why I don't get it. What do they want to do other than? It's, isn't it a i thought that bridge is a federal highway so I, if, so maybe i guess just to get dolly the company that owns the ship to pay for the you know whatever the penalties for it whatever mr scott said two national law firms will take action to hold the wrongdoers responsible that's the problem who are the wrongdoers hello canon hotep Dom de Monco, Monco. who this is, I mean, it was an accident. Who is, re the aim said was to hold all entities accountable, including the owner, charterer, manager, operator of the Dolly ship, as well as potentially liable third parties. What third parties would be liable other than the, the, the people who run the container ship? Um, they're going after pockets. That's all they're doing, man. And then most of the 47-year-old bridge, bridge collapsed when it was struck by the dolly. We saw all that. So anyway, um, I'm you know, good for the family. I mean, even if it's, you know, not somebody who survived, at least it can help the family get some closure that they found the body. All right, moving on. Um now, this is we knew about this yesterday, but I'm going to this is another one from Gun Fox. Um, U.S. tells Israel it won't join any retaliatory strikes on Iran. Um, why would we? They didn't attack us. So I get it. Now, I hope they don't try to restrain Israel and what they decide to do about it because it's none of our damn business. But, um, but they did help us uh, re d deter the attack, along with Jordan and a couple other Arab countries, which is fascinating. The White House has warned Israel that the U.S. will not participate in any retaliatory strikes on Iran, senior administration officials have said. Over 300 drones and missiles were fired at Israel overnight, which Iran said was in response to an April 1st strike on its consulate in Syria. Almost all weapons were shot down by Israeli, U.S., and allied forces. Before they reach their targets, officials said Joe Biden urged Israel to consider its response carefully. Okay, hello, number one, and trippy liberty, my brother. What's up? Um, speaking to reporters on Sunday, uh, senior administration officials said that Mr. Biden told Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to think carefully and strategically about how his forces replied to the unprecedented action, the first direct attack by Iran on the country. Well, the, notice they use the first direct attack because I'm pretty sure that uh, Hamas and Hezbollah, who've been firing rockets from various locations around the Middle East into Israel, uh, would be the indirect attack on Israel by Iran. So I, that's why they use the first direct attack in that sentence. There you go. Um, the official added that the Biden administration believes Israel got the best of it in the exchange. What do you mean got the best of it? By by, by knocking down weapons? Oh, see, um, the guy tried to punch you in the mouth, but you blocked it, so you got the best of it. I, I don't get it. That's a stupid thing to say, Joe. But, of course, it is Joe Biden, so what do you expect? Um... About 99% of the missiles, drones, and cruise missiles launched during Iran's retaliatory operation were shot down or intercepted, which U.S. officials point to as a sign of Israeli military superiority over Iran. The U.S. aircraft and naval vessels shot down dozens of Iranian projectiles as the attack took place. More than 80 drones and at least six ballistic missiles were downed by U.S. aircraft and vessels or by air defense forces over Iraq. This includes seven drones and ballistic missiles as they prepared to launch from Yemen, U.S. Central Command added. In an update on Sunday, the conversation took place between Mr. Biden and Mr. Netanyahu at a time of heightened emotion. Oh, is that heightened emotion? Yeah, I, I, would, I can understand that. 
just after the attack, which included about 100 ballistic missiles simultaneously flying towards Israel. During the call, the two leaders had a discussion about how to slow things down and think things through. I, I'm i surprised they haven't already just destroyed Iran, but that's a whole other story. Um, with Biden emphasizing that Israel has gotten the best of it. That makes no sense. The official declined to say, however, whether the White House warned against a significant response, saying only that it is a calculation the Israelis have to make. Yeah, because it's their damn country. They can make whatever decision they want to. Um, it, it, Boy, I mean, I, no one wants, I don't want a war, but damn, <laughs> damn. I could see why they might decide to, 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 to clean out a little of uh, certain areas of Iran. <laughs> just, just like strategic excavation, so to speak. So anyway, all right. Thank you, Gunfox, for that one, too. Gunfox, you're on a roll. These are all really good. Um, let's try. Okay, the last one Gunfox sent me. Oh, this is, okay, this has got to be, this has got to be satire. But I think it's funny. And maybe, I don't know. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, what? Okay, so. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> U.S. citizens will need to show bank account statements to get into Latin American country in 2025 and pay $81 for a visa. This is not a parody. I don't believe. <sighs> Americans will soon have to bring more than a passport to gain entry into the country. According to CNN Travel, oh, this is in Brazil. According to CNN Travel, Brazil will be implementing their new visa program starting next year. In accordance with new rules, which are set to be put into place in 2025, travelers from the United States, Canada, and Australia will have to not only share bank statements, but also pay for a visa. Why the fuck do you need to? Why why do you need to pay for or uh, show bank statements? Are, are are a lot of are a lot of expats like illegally staying in Brazil too long, or are they outlasting out their visas? Um, just as the European Union postponed the ETIAS program which would require visitors from most non-EU countries to obtain pre-travel clearance, Brazil had also originally halted the new visa system. But all bank account showings bets are set to be back on soon enough. Still, there will be some instances where obtaining entry will be easier. Those traveling for tourism or via cruise travel will be able to apply for an e-visa rather than having to visit the, a consulate. The overall cost of the visa will be $80.90, but will last for a decade. The visa will be valid across multiple entries. Stays will be also limited to 90 days per year. The visa required is nothing new, however. Rather, U.S. travelers who wish to travel to Brazil prior to 2019 were forced to get visas in order to be permitted entry. Now, that's not so it's not necessarily unusual for some countries to have to get a visa to travel there. I had to get a visa to go to Nigeria. My, that's where my father was. Um, but like, like you don't necessarily need to get a visa to go to the European Union, for example. Um, so anyway, as reported by Tampa Bay News Channel 8, former President Jair Bolsonaro had initially removed the requirement to boost the tourism industry. Well, he's a smart man because people want to go to tourism to Brazil, I guess. It's not the safest place to go if you're in America. But anyway, in the meantime, e-visas were introduced last year just prior to the prerequisite being abolished completely. Bolsonaro's predecessor, President Luis Inacio Lula da Silva, decided to reintroduce the requirement to maintain reciprocity between the countries. According to the Brazilian government website, a letter of intent will also be necessary. This letter should detail the dates of the trip and plan details of your stay, such as lodging. In addition to showing proof of residence in the U.S., return tickets to Brazil, or a signed return declaration, as well as income, will be required. That means visitors will have to show their last three checking or savings account statements or last six pay slips 
It's like you're buying a fucking house. I, you know what for? In order to be granted entry, travelers will also need to show at least two thousand dollars in their account. Those who can't make these requirements will need a sponsor a sponsor to sign for them to show their finances. Instead, the system isn't a one way street either. Brazilians traveling to the U.S. must be prepared to schedule a visa appointment at their nearest embassy. They also have to prove that they have the finances to pay for their trip and will need a visa, which will set them back $185. That's almost double the fee of what Americans will be made to pay when you, when entering Brazil. So now, here's the question. Is this because the U.S. requires that of Brazilians? Did that something happen? That is, This is not unusual. The U.S. does this too. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's probably why they re-implemented it, because they probably do that in the United States. I and I can I get it. Um, so I don't know. I okay. It's an interesting article. Um, but again, that's the word reciprocity uh, comes to mind, and that's what they're doing. So there you go. All right, thank you, Gunfox, for the slew of articles. Look, um, I wanted to talk a little bit. I don't, I'm already out of time, basically. Um, here's, I'll just give you some headlines and you can read the articles because there it's, there's some doozies today. Um, Joe Biden's parole pipeline has imported over 950,000 foreign national to the U (laughs) S since the beginning of this year, exceeding the population of South Dakota. President Joe Biden's parole pipeline has released more than 950,000 foreign nationals in the United States since its inception in January 2023. Oh, since 2023. I'm sorry. Um, not 2024, 2023. But that it's, well, wait a minute. So they've paroled. <sighs> so anyway, last week, the Department of Homeland Security released figures for March showing Biden's parole pipeline is continuing to release tens of thousands of foreign nationals into the United States interior via the southern border and commercial flights. From January 2023 to March 2024, more than 950,000 foreign nationals have been released in America, to American communities thanks to Biden's parole, pi- parole pipeline. The pipeline brings foreign nationals to the U.S. through the administration's CBP-1 mobile app and humanitarian parole. So this is not even the, this is not even the border crossing crutch and release. This is actually a program that they've come up with. Um, And they've done 950,000 people through that alone. (laughs) To add on to the, what, seven and a half million border, illegal border crosses that they just kind of process and say, oh, well, here's a cell phone. Here's, it'll give you an alert when you have to be in court. Um, Holy shit. This is amazing. Um. In front page magazine, the reality of migrant crime. So you know how they always say, well, immigrants uh, commit crimes at a lower rate than born, uh, natural born Americans. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, because they're always talking about all immigrants, including legal immigrants. Yeah, I'm. That does surprise me that legal immigrants uh, commit crime at a lower rate than than natural born Americans. But <laughs> I'm guessing that illegal immigrants, like people, illegal border crossers probably commit crimes probably at a rate similar or higher possibly but certainly they are certainly at a higher rate than they would if they were not in our country how about that how about not importing crime so this is a whole article about talking about the reality of migrant crime in daily caller uh national guardsman shoots a migrant who allegedly stabbed two others a national guard soldier fired at a migrant who stabbed two individuals at a Texas at the Texas Mexico border, according to a document obtained by News Nation, the incident occurred on Sunday afternoon along the Rio Grande River in El Paso's Lower Valley. Um, a member of the Indiana National Guard deployed to areas um, as a part of Republican Texas Governor, Governor Greg Abbott's Operation Lone Star witnessed an individual stab a fellow migrant and fired their weapon in response. The stabbing reportedly took place on the U.S. side of the river. So. Um, yeah, a little, <laughs> probably some, uh, how do you want to phrase this? Some military action that he wasn't expected to happen. 
In the Federalist, uh, Colorado County sues state for banning local enforcement of immigration laws. The Colorado's sixth most populous county is suing the state over a pair of laws that prohibit local governments from assisting federal officials with immigration enforcement. So this isn't even them doing it on their own. They were reporting, I guess, people to uh, immigration officials, like federal ones, and they, they passed a law that allows them does not allow them to do that. I, go figure. Um, federal policy along the southern border resulted in an unlimited string of illegal immigrants in our communities. Douglas County Commissioner Chairman George Teal, who opened a press conference, we see it as a duty of the county to push back against these state laws that prohibit us from working with federal authorities to keep Douglas County and our communities safe. So the, they have a law that, what is it? A lawsuit filed Monday highlights two pieces of legislation passed by far left Democrats. Um, the first bars local law enforcement from arresting illegal migrants and holding them in custody based solely on their violation of federal immigration laws. The second law prohibits local cooperation with federal authorities by detaining illegal migrants in various facilities. Why? Why can't you cooperate and help federal authorities if the federal authorities allow it? This is not like Texas where they're going to do it on their own. They're helping the federal authorities whose job it is to stop the migration or immigration or legal immigration or illegal border crossing or whatever you want to call it. Why? Why not? In Breitbart, um, Jonathan Turley talks about Trump's New York hush money case. Several, there, there's several articles about the hush money case, which unfortunately I'm not getting to. Okay. I got to call it a day. Look, um, hopefully this technical difficulty shit that I went through today doesn't happen again tomorrow on Wednesday, which may end up being a what the fuck Wednesday. But you know what? Gun Fox, you have outdone yourself today with these fantastic articles. I appreciate it. Not bad. Six more news stories in under 40 minutes. Hmm. And did not rant. Hmm. I might need to get more news stories that will get Marty going. No, you could just, these were perfect and very appropriate for the show. Thank you. And thanks to all of you who are watching today. I'm going to put all these links in the chat. Gun Fox's links are the six at the bottom of the list because I'm just keeping them down there so they're easily grouped together. But there's tons of news in the links today that I did not even come close to getting to. So I would appreciate it if you click on that link when I post it and see what's there. So thank you for joining me today on the morning night live. I, um, I got, no, stop, uh, stop doing that. I hate that. This, there, there's a problem. They, they, they messed up Streamlabs, and I'm gonna have to get another update. So let me just fix this. I'm not gonna play the outro until the outro is supposed to play. Hey, thank you for joining me today on the morning night live. Gotta go. My name's P dog Knight. The links will be in the chat, blah, blah, blah. I am out of here. Bye bye. Have a great day. Hey, this is P-Dog Knight, and thank you for watching today on the P-Dog Knight channel. If you have an observation or remark you'd like to make about this video or my channel, I absolutely welcome you to write it in the comment section down below. I really look forward to hearing from you. And before you go, if you like what you saw but you're not already subscribed, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and definitely click that bell that pops up afterwards so you'll be notified when I post new videos or when we go live. I broadcast my live show, The Morning Night Live, Monday through Friday at 10 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock Central. A special thank you to all the supporters of this channel who share our videos on social media and who make donations through Streamlabs, YouTube, Venmo, and Cash App, which are all linked in the description down below. Thanks again, and until next time, I'm P-Dog Knight, and I'm out of here.